What's up everyone, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and today we are back with another video. And for today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create five synth patches that I feel like every producer should know how to make from scratch. So we're gonna be looking at how to create synth brasses, how to create sidechain saw synths, how to create respaces, 808s, and then we're gonna wrap it up with how to make atmospheric pads. We're gonna basically start with nothing and then I'm gonna be using Serum, but you can really follow along using any kind of saw synthesizer that you want. So Serum, Massive, Anna 2, Vital, um, it really doesn't matter. We're just going to go over some of the basic techniques and principles. And then as I'm building the patches from that most basic form, I'll kind of talk about some different parameters and different uh, techniques that you can use to kind of customize each individual category to fit your production better. So by the time we wrap this video up, you should have a pretty good understanding of how to create synth patches within all five categories and how to tweak those to kind of make them fit your personal style or your personal production. So hopefully you like this video today. If you do, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to head over to our website, Make Pop Music, we have tons of free and paid content over there, including tons and tons and tons of serum presets that are insane. So if you want to head over there after this video and support the channel, we really, really appreciate it. But let's hop into Cubase so I can show you how to create these five different synth categories. All right, now we're in Cubase. What I want to do is show you how to make five of these different synth patches. And then I'll kind of explain as we build them ways that you can tweak them to kind of fit your production or your personal style a little bit better. So let's go ahead and let's start with synth brass. I'm going to be using serum for all of these examples, but you can really use any synth that you want. I know Vital, Anna 2, Massive, those will all be pretty simple similar in the different kind of tools and parameters that they have. So yeah, you just have to translate it over to whatever you're more familiar with. Let's go ahead and start. This is the initialization preset in Serum. It's just a, a saw wave. Cool. Sounds like nothing. All you want to do to kind of create a brass is it's really easy. We're going to focus on getting the envelope right, getting a filter right, and then getting the kind of spread right with whatever you want to do. So I tend to like my synth brass is pretty wide. So let's go to like seven on unison. This might also be called voices. Drag them in a little bit, make them a little bit louder on the width. That's a good starting point for me. And then once you have that, I like to kind of go to an envelope next and figure out how this is going to decay. And with the synth brass, you can decide if you want it to kind of have that staccato, like, you know, that attack at the beginning. A lot of the time, synth brasses will tend to be a little bit softer. So maybe you drag this up to like 100, soften that up a little bit. You can even drag this up a little bit more. Depending on how you want that to kind of hit when you, you know, press the keys. The most important part of a synth brass, I feel like, is going to be how this reacts with a filter. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the filter, route envelope one to that. And you can hear right away, we're pretty close. If you want to change these different filter parameters, all you have to do is hover over this little circle right here. Anything that's in that icy blue is going to be where the filter starts and stops. So from here to here is going to start here, wrap around. So you can kind of see the cutoff being dragged down. I don't want it to be quite that drastic. So let's go ahead and let's shrink the parameters, scroll it up a little bit. That is kind of like the main basis of a brass. And then if you really want to kind of make it a little bit more special or a little bit more full, you can always add an octave up. So again, I'll just put a saw wave an octave up. Make sure that this filter is also sending to oscillator B. You can also change these. These don't have to just be saw waves. There is a Juno wavetable in here that I kind of like. So if I go to that on A and B, we'll kind of get this cool. We could even drag this to something else. Turn that down an octave. And then you can adjust the filter as well. So this is at a 12 dB slope per octave. I tend to like my brasses anywhere between 12, 18, and 24. Depending on how aggressive I want them and how I want them to kind of decay. Um, you can also shorten this up and kind of give yourself more of that like really short kind of staccato-y. Just a nice little cool thing to do. And then the last thing that I would say that you could think about adding is some kind of noise, just to give this a little bit of extra top end. 
let's go ahead and we'll go to our analog folder. Everybody should have this. We'll go to the JP160 high pass. And then you can make sure that this filter is also sending to that noise. And then just adjust everything as you want. So we'll kind of uh, make this a little bit shorter, make this a little bit more aggressive, and then turn this to 18. Here's a pretty good starting point. Once you have that patch, all you have to do is add in the effects that you want. So like for this, I'd probably add a little bit of chorus. I'd probably add some reverb. Drag up the high cut so there's not so much top end buzz. And I mean, that really is kind of like the basics of this. I'd probably swap this honestly back to something like a saw wave. And I mean, there you go. That's pretty much any kind of synth brass that you could want to create. Then you can just get as weird as you want with this envelope. There you go. There's a synth brass, wavetables that you should kind of keep in mind, filters that you should kind of keep in mind, and then how to route everything up. Let's move on to sidechain saw waves. These are going to be like those uh, kind of sidechain wubby synths that you hear in something like an electronic song. So we have like... There's our initialized preset. We're starting again with that uh, saw wave, which I think is gonna be the perfect choice for this no matter what. So let's go ahead and drag that up to seven, give us some detune, give us some side blend. And then what you're gonna wanna do for this is we're actually gonna leave the envelope like this. We don't really need any decay or any um, release or anything like that. The movement from this is mainly going to be in LFO 1. So if you want that kind of like rising, like boom, 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 you're just going to want to ramp up. So all we need to do is take that, drag that to the level. And again, anything within this icy blue is going to be your parameter. So I'm going to have it start at basically zero and shift all the way to like 70. And then what you need to do is hit trigger so that every time you hit a new key, it starts at this beginning point. Otherwise, Serum's not gonna know, and if you have that off, you can see that it'll just cycle through normally, but it's not gonna necessarily start it at the right time. So if you have it on trigger, and then you can set your rate. So I have it at a quarter note. If you wanna do like a half note, You can also play around with this and it doesn't have to rise. You can have it fall. So we'll go back to like an eighth note. And then what you can do is you can even have like some of the more uh, future bassy kind of sense would kind of have a little bit of a ramp up and then a pretty quick ramp down. And then a lot of the time what I'll do with something like this is I'll add some kind of like background oscillator. So sometimes I'll go with something like a square wave or some kind of like modulated square wave like this. Let me turn off oscillator one. Just to give us some harmonics, give us a little bit of something different and then drag that LFO to that as well. Set the parameters where you want. I'm gonna kind of have it mirror oscillator one. I just might have it end a little bit quieter. And then if you want, you could even have this also go to a filter. So like if you were doing something like that more, um, you know, future base, pretty quick kind of wubby stab, what I would do is I would probably have this go to a filter, trigger A and B. Then you could go ahead and you could turn on something like some compression. I know a lot of stuff like this is gonna have these like multi-band OTT style compressors. Sometimes I'll have some reverb on them. 
something kind of short, kind of dark. And then again, just kind of play around with that LFO to give it the movement that you want. Envelope should probably stay where it's just kind of a consistent uh, volume. And then if you want to add a little bit of top end to kind of help it cut through a mix, similar to what we did for the brass, again, I'm probably just going to go in and add some analog pink noise, turn this up a little bit and make sure that that filter's uh, hitting that noise as well. And then we'll make sure that we are hitting this level. You can get as aggressive and crazy with this as you want. And that's really all it comes down to is just know whatever uh, oscillator that you're going to be triggering needs to kind of just be routed to this filter. And then really, I would use something like LFO1 to control however your filter is going to respond. So we kind of have this controlling the level of everything. It's controlling a filter. We've got some post effects. And that's pretty much how I would create any kind of like saw wave, square wave kind of moving sense. So whether that's going to be like a side chain like we started with or even like a kind of, um, you know, stabby little pluck like that they're all kind of created the same way it just really depends on what kind of movement and what kind of uh shape that your lfo makes and that's pretty much it they're pretty simple let's move on to an 808 so i'll go ahead and initialize this let me take it down a couple octaves there we go and so all i'm going to want to do is i typically will start with some kind of sine wave this is my favorite on here analog bd sign and you can hear as I drag this wavetable position up, it's going to give it a little bit of saturation. So let's have it like right there at the beginning. That's a pretty good starting point. I'm actually going to turn this down an octave. Just so if I was, you know, swapping between tracks, I'm not constantly taking my MIDI keyboard up and down a bunch of octaves. This is fine. Good starting point. Wavetable sounds okay. We need to give it some shape. So I'm going to shape this with envelope one. This will change depending on how quick you want your 808 to decay. So if you want kind of a short stabby, like the baby style 808, maybe like under a second. And then if you want kind of a longer 808, that's going to give you a little bit more low end and sustain. You can just drag that decay time up. And then I like to take my attack up just a few milliseconds. So it doesn't give me that click and pop at the beginning. That feels a little bit better. And then 808s to me really come alive when you add some saturation. So I like adding diode one and I'm gonna go ahead and filter this post distortion. So it's gonna trigger um, this low pass filter after the distortion. If I turn that off, it gives me some buzzing that I don't necessarily love. I feel like it kind of would just get in the way. And you can turn that uh, drive up a little bit, turn the mix down. And that kind of is a good starting point if you wanted it to be really short. And if you like your 808 to kind of sustain as you let off, you can have your release up. I tend to just have my release as short as possible. That way I can just program my 808s where I want them to start and end. I don't really like the guessing game of like a decayed 808 like that. Another thing you'll probably want to do is have this set to mono. If you want to have any kind of like sliding between notes, you can turn on always, drag up your portamento. And then if you want to kind of modulate any pitch bending with a pitch wheel, I would go ahead and set this at 12 semitones up, 12 semitones down. I know we've talked about this before, so kind of as you. There you go. That kind of gives you an equal octave. And that's the start. If you want to have any kind of like a kick in your 808 and you don't want to layer over a kick, you just go to envelope two. We're going to create a really fast decay, probably around like 100 to 150 milliseconds. And then what you're going to do is go to your matrix. We're going to select envelope two. And then for the destination, we're selecting, selecting master tuning. And then this knob right here, you can drag from anywhere between like 10 and 20. Because what that's, what that is doing is it's basically creating a faux kick sound by 
taking a sine wave and just kind of pitching it down really fast, which is typically what like a trap kick even is in the first place. So if you drag this out too much, it's gonna be like a bass drop. And if you have it too short, you're not gonna get any of that, like that thumpy transient anyway. So if you have it anywhere between like 100 and 150, and this anywhere between, you know, like maybe 15 and 30, it just gives you a nice little bit of punch to the beginning of that kick. What you can do too is if you wanna make your 808 a little bit more unique, you don't have to go with something like a sine wave. You can always go with something like a square, but what you can do is you can just use the filter. So let's go ahead and let's filter this off at like 24 dB per octave. Cause that's gonna give you some of that saturation and some of those harmonics that a square wave has over a sine wave. However, you're cutting off a lot of that garbage right there with this uh, filter. And if you wanna kind of have it, you know, give you like a little Travis Scott, super hard effect. What you can do is you can have envelope three, create some kind of like, kind of ramp down on that cutoff, similar to what we did for the synth brass. And if you drive up this resonance, it's gonna give you something really gnarly. Then you can play around with the detuning. I tend to not detune 808s very often, unless it's like a really specific effect I want. But there you go. There's how to make your 808s in Serum. Super easy, super quick. Let's move on to re-spaces. These are pretty similar, to be honest. Like you're gonna use a lot of the same wave tables and wave shapes. Um, the way that you're gonna do it though is it's just not really gonna have any decay. So let's go ahead and let's start with, for something like this, honestly, I might go ahead and start with like a square. Just because it gives us a little bit more um, beef and those harmonics kind of are really, really nice for this, this detuning that we're gonna need. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut this off so heavily. So let's go to like a 24 dB. Let's take this down an octave. There we go. And a lot of the time what people will do on their re-spaces is they'll turn up this resonance. And they'll find where it feels really nice. Let's have it like right there. And then you can turn on key tracking, so. Once you set it, as you play different notes, it'll move that uh, starting cutoff point, which in turn will move that resonance, which kind of makes it a little bit more musical. Again, turn on the mono, give it some portamento. And then what you could do Let's say you don't want that much top end, you can just add a master filter over here. There you go. If you use something like a sign that we did earlier with like the 808, you're gonna need some of that distortion to bring it out. So let's do something like. But as you can hear, the sine wave is gonna have some phasing stuff happen a little bit more often. So if you're using something like a sine wave, what I would do is I just have that go right up the middle. And then I would layer in a top layer to kind of give you some of that width. So we're gonna make sure that this filter hits on oscillator B as well. And let's go ahead and give it some width. If we have it an octave up, it kind of gives us a cool vibe. We take it down an octave. And there you go. That's how to make a re-space. They're generally gonna be fully sustained. They're not really gonna have any decay or anything like that. Typically it's gonna be like a sine wave or a square wave or a saw wave that gets detuned a bunch, has a bunch of filtering and then a bunch of saturation to give it some harmonics. And that feels pretty good. That's all I would do for a respace. Change around the uh, different wavetables as you see fit. Let's move on to the last sound that I wanna talk about and that is pads, specifically morphing pads. So what we're gonna do for this is just kind of come up with a starting point. I wanna drive up a bunch of attack and then it, since it's a pad, I want it to decay over time quite a bit. So let's give it like an eight second decay. 
take this back to our octave. And then what I like to do is I filter out my pads pretty heavily, typically with something like a low pass or even a band pass could work pretty cool with these. And again, you can turn on that key tracking. We'll spread this out a little bit with some width. And this can be pretty wide because it's going to be super spacey. Let's give it some chorus. Why not? Give it some phaser and some flanger. Give it a bunch of reverb because who cares? It's just going to be a kind of a background element. I think it can even have more than that. Give it a bunch of delay. Typically, if you do like a ping pong delay, this can kind of give it a really cool vibe. Have it pretty wet. And then with pads, what I like to do is I like to use some kind of wavetable that has a lot more movement. So like you can see right here, if you click on it in Serum, you can kind of see how that wavetable moves. So I'm going to pick something that's got some movement. And then what I'll do is I'll have LFO1 morph really slowly, like let's go over like four bars. And then I'll set that at envelope because I don't want it to re-trigger and cycle like we did with those sidechain saws earlier. I just want it to play through once and then it can kind of leave it at wherever it ends. Then what I'll do is I'll drag that to the wavetable position. And then again, we can kind of do the same thing with oscillator B. Let's turn on that filter for oscillator B and let's pick a kind of cool wavetable that just gives us a little bit of something unique. And then in Serum, they have the Noise Oscillator, Anna 2 has it, Vital has it, Massive has it, pretty much any kind of wavetable synth will have a Noise Oscillator. And you can either download some cool noises or typically you can find some in here. Like let's go with, uh, I don't know, like who cares? Let's just go with Horns of Fear. Let's hear what that sounds like. Let's go with Whirlwind. I kind of like that better. And then what you can do is you can kind of make this, if you turn on the key tracking, then it'll just shift it up by semitone and not just by arbitrary number. So let's drag it up like an octave. And then I don't want to necessarily filter out that horror winds because if I do, it's just going to cut most of it off. But what you can do, I mean, it doesn't work too, too bad on this one actually, so I might leave it. But then what you can do is you can add a master filter again, like we did earlier to just kind of catch everything at the end to make sure that everything feels nice and consistent. Add some EQ to kind of filter out some of that low end to make sure it's not muddy. I think we can turn that wind noise down a little bit. And then you could even add in some modulation. So let's go ahead and let's pan this wind and let's go ahead and let's pan this top octave. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap them. So we'll have this go over like two bars. We can add in a sub oscillator that's just kind of giving us a little bit of sustain. And there you go, that's how to make your morphing pads. You're just gonna wanna have a lot of attack, a lot of decay, and then, uh, yeah, you can kinda just mess around with the different LFOs and oscillators and everything like that to kind of give you a little bit of swelling movement. And again, if you're using something like an LFO, you can have that re-trigger, you can have that just play it through once. It just gives you a really cool way to kind of control where all these wavetables shift from, which in turn just gives you that morphing. Like if we were to completely bypass all of these, it's gonna be a lot more stationary and it's not really that enjoyable. It's fine, but once you turn them back on, everything has a bit more pizzazz.
Then you can just mess around with your cutoff. And there you have it. That is how to make five completely different style scents and then customize them for whatever your production style is. And that's gonna do it. There we have it. We have just created different synth patches in five different categories. I really enjoyed doing this video. I think it kind of breaks down that synthesis and sound design really can just start at a super basic form and then you can really get creative and customize it from there. If you all wanna see more videos like this, let me know what kind of synth patches you'd like to see in a part two. Maybe we can kind of make this a recurring series where I kind of show you how to build different categories from the ground up. So if you have any ideas, let us know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It Definitely helps us out. And then if you want to support the channel, you can head over to makepopmusic.com and check out some of our sample packs, preset packs, courses. We have blog posts. We have tons of free content over there. So definitely head over there and show us some love. But that's going to be it for this week. We'll be back next week with another video and an important announcement. So I can't wait to see you all then. But until then, much love, everyone. Peace. Peace.